I'm going to show you how to create 3D LUTs using the 3D LUT creator to come up with something subtle, nice like this one. On top of this, I'm going to show you how to color grade using a reference photo, export that to a 3D LUT right after the intro. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo, a car photographer from Bahrain. I make videos about car photography and Photoshop, and in this case, I'm doing a video about color grading. So if you don't want to miss out on such content, please consider subscribing. And to help with the algorithm, you can like the video. Also, leave me a comment in the comment section below. You can tell me what did you have for breakfast, for example. Okay, so I have this photo of Rachel, who's a model. I'll leave a, a link to her Instagram account in the description below. And now I'm going to load her photo into 3D LUT Creator. Now it's a standalone software. It's not really a plugin, but it works seamlessly with, with Photoshop. Now there are a lot of options here in this nifty tool. Trust me, this can get really complex and color graders are going to love this. But I'm going to mainly work with the AB um, tab to show you how I color grade or the process of me color grading. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to load the image from Photoshop. So I'm going to click image from Photoshop and it's going to grab that photo. And there you go, it loaded up the photo. And now, as you can see, if I move my mouse around certain areas, you can see them reflecting over here. And that's the beauty of this software. So if, for example, I select green, move it around, you can see that the hue starts to change. I can change the color to whatever I want. Now, before moving forward, what I like to do is switch the color mode to the LAB. I found out that this color mode works best for my color grading or um, for what I'm trying to do. And I'm going to change the grid to 16 points instead of eight. And that just gives me more flexibility, more points to work with. <laughs> We're going to see this in a bit. So now if I start moving the neutral, because this is what I'm going to basically work with, I'm going to color gray using the neutral and um, everything changes color. And we don't want that. We don't want to touch her skin tone. Let me reset this. Now if I hover over her skin, I can see where it corresponds on the grid. And it's mainly these three points that I'm going to pin. So when you click on any point, you're going to pin it, meaning it's not going to get affected with whatever you're going to do. Let me show you. Now, if I start moving this, notice how everything is changing color, but her skin. So if I move this really down there, you can see it is retaining the three points where her skin resides. So I'm not going to go very crazy with this grays. I'm going to basically look at a nice cool point and think about here is good enough. Now, although her skin points did not move, it looks as if the skin is really saturated and that's because of how we color graded. Everything is looking a bit teal or blue and we can control the skin part and desaturate her skin color by just moving that point towards the center. And I don't want to do it a lot. Somewhere around here is just good. Okay, so, so far so good. But let me show you what else we can do. Let's say I don't want to affect the brightest colors in the photo. And for that, I'm going to use the 2D curve. Now we know that the brightest colors are going towards blue because that's how we graded it in the neutrals. And if I want to cancel that out, it's going to be complementing the blue with the red. It should cancel it out technically. 
correct? So let's give that a try. Why not? Let's let's try that out. So it's this box over here. All right, so let's hover over this area and start moving the grid, which is this one. And yes, it did indeed remove the blue color cast from the brightest areas of the photo. All right, let's have a look at the before and after. This is the before, this is the after, this is the before, this is the after. Beautiful. Now let's say I want to add a bit of contrast. I'll go to the curves and I'm going to do the classic S curve right here. And you can see that we've added a bit of contrast. That's it. Let's see before the contrast, before, after, before, after. It's really up to you. You can always add contrast in Photoshop. All right, there's one more thing that I want to do. I want to change the hue of the green. Remember, if you move the points towards the outer of the circle, it's going to saturate it. If you move it down, it's going to desaturate it. And what I want to do is just slightly change the color. And I'm going to do that. I kind of like this. Now right, let's have a look at the before and after. Before, after, before, after. Great. Now we're happy. We're done with the edit. Now how do we go about sending it into Photoshop? There are two ways of doing this. The first way is to click this button and that says LUT to Photoshop. And if we click that, it's going to bring an adjustment layer over here that we can control just the same way as we control anything. It's a layer. That's great. But what if we want to use it in video or apply it to more images? We can then go back to the 3D LUT creator and we can export this look as a LUT by just clicking this button over here. We can save it as a 3D LUT. Now we call it, I don't know, teal, no orange, something like that. And click save. So now if we go back to Photoshop, let me disable this and pull up a color lookup table and um, import teal, no orange, open this one up and there you go. And of course we can control the intensity of the effect. All right, let's move to our other photo, which is this one. And I'm going to show you how to color grade this using a reference photo. Now I found this photo on Unsplash. It's by a photographer called Martin Catler or Catler. Kudos to you. And what we're going to copy is this grade by Mark Riccioni, Riccioni. Now I know you have a lot of questions whether this is legal. I think so. Is it ethical? Mm, I'm not sure. But I'm going to show you the process anyway. So let's load the image from Photoshop. And now it's going to load that up. There you go. And we have it here. The next thing we're going to do is load the reference image. And um, we're going to use this one. I'm going to load it up. Now we go to edit and match colors to reference. And this is what we have so far. And you have a bunch of controls that we can refine this because it doesn't look exactly as we want it. So um, we can control definitely we can control the uh, white balance, we can make it cooler, or we make it warmer. I'm just going to keep it at the warm settings right now around here. And I'm going to look for the hue, the perfect hue because that is currently wrong. This is the wrong hue, in my opinion. And it looks like it's somewhere around here. And well, let's click OK. 
So let's have a look at the before, after, before, after, and there you go. You have um, a grade from a reference photo and we can furtherly refine this. Let's say you want to increase the red saturation. We're going to move it up just a bit and maybe make it a bit orangey. And of course you have a bunch of controls from um, you know the temperature, white balance, brightness, contrast, and so on forth. Let's take this to Photoshop, lot to Photoshop. I'm going to have this here. This is before, and this is the after. I can of course save this into a lot and apply it in whatever photo that I want. Anyway. Alright, I believe we've reached the end of this video, this tutorial. Now, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video.